Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night from wherever time zone you are attending this webinar. I'm happy to welcome you for the session addressing the latest version of MyFleet, which is the office solution as a component of our NAF Cloud ecosystem. My name is Frank Boga, and together with my colleague, Mike Adrianov, being the product manager of MyFleet, I'm thankful that you take your time to participate in today's webinar, which is scheduled to take about one hour. Some housekeepings to be addressed first. Um, by default, cameras and mics are being switched off and will remain switched off during the webinar to make sure that the connection remains stable. Um, in the tool itself, you will find a question section in the upper right corner. Please leave questions and queries there. We will answer and discuss, discuss those um, at the end of our webinar. Yesterday, we recognized that the webinar tool has some problems to work with Firefox as a web browser. Other browsers are working properly, but with Firefox, as I just said, we had some problems. If some of your colleagues or friends would just reach out to you saying, I cannot log in, please let them know that the Firefox is not working properly, but the other browsers, so that we need, they would need to change to use another browser. We announced this already also in the, in the uh, announcement messages we, we addressed. However, for sacred orders would be great if you could let them know. Right, the agenda for today's session is as follows. We are already in the welcome message by me somehow. Mike in the next topic will guide us then through the MyFleet and the various uh, modules, options and features we have in there to monitor the fleet performance in terms of being compliant with customers' navigation policy, looking after assisting in incident investigation for navigational incidents, doing automated voyage calculation, helping in conducting due diligence when it comes to checking the voyage plan, being a user board ship, and some other topics. All those will be addressed by Mike. In terms of addressing the welcome message again, as I said, I'm very pleased having you here attending the webinar. I see a lot of known names in the attendee lists, which from friends and customers, which we are working with already since years and accompanying there. Um, but I see also some new names and I'm happy to see that. So many thanks for your interest. Um, in the last webinar, which was addressing Myra, my root appraisal, I've been told my intro was much too long. So I stop here now, but I will hand over directly to Mike and enjoy the session. And Mike, the stage is yours. Thanks a lot, Frank. I will share my screen. Yeah, and let's get started. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. My name is Mike Andrianov. I'm product manager for my fleet application. And let's start our session. Actually, this session would be a formalization session for my fleet application. I will explain what is about, what's the main tasks, what kind of features we have in this last version. It would be some kind of live demo because I have my demo vessel on the way and you will see how it works, what we have inside of application. And this is a small agenda for today before Q&A session. Of course, I will not be able to cover all features. It's not simply possible to do in 30, 35 minutes, but main features will be explained, described, and you are welcome. Let's start with application. What is about? It's a web-based application intended for fleet managers, fleet uh, operators on shore to monitor their fleets, vessels in terms of tracking function, voyage planning function, and voyage monitoring function. Uh, application itself, it's a web-based application, as I said. It can be used on small laptops during business trips or in the office or even using large screen displays to present uh, situation with the fleet in the office, uh, in the suitable mode, in the presented mode, even for monitoring purposes. 
for daily on daily basis. Application can be run on in different browsers with supports Chrome, Firefox, Edge, and even Safari. We have tested application on tablet devices, and in most cases, <clears throat> it works in uh, landscape mode. So it just uh, up and running. Let's start with the uh, user management first. What is about and what we have as a user accounts for my fleet. Let me jump to my second screen, please. User management. In general, we have one administration account for any uh, fleet owner or fleet management or fleet operator companies. And this admin account is uh, allowed to use my fleet under administrative mode, but Additionally to that, we have capabilities to create more users inside of a company. It might be particular fleet managers who are responsible for their own vessel from the whole fleet. For instance, you may see this user management page. I have three demo users and some of them are active. And you may see, for instance, for this particular user, we don't have any connected vessel. I will connect only two of them and perform saving. User account was updated. And what does it mean? This particular user, CH006OC, after login into my fleet, he will see only those two vessels connected to, to him from the whole fleet. Of course, uh, fleet owners, we can see the whole fleet and all that stuff is managed by the user management capabilities. Okay, when I will switch off with my uh, admin account. And currently, you may see main my fleet layout under the normal user account. And in that case, user management page is not accessible. REST functionality is more or less the same. And it's only related to the administrative mode and user creation. Well, let's uh, talk about uh, some layouts and uh, interfaces, what we have inside of my fleet application. On the left side, you may see three buttons, fleet list, fleet manager, main screen, and settings. And on the right side, you may see information related to the selected vessel. Currently, I have uh, one to close to eight vessels. It's my demo fleet. Of course, it's not a real vessels. And selected one, and which I will use during presentation, is a Chatwold NavCloud demo vessel. Currently, it's selected. You may see this vessel in the chat display area. And vessel-related details, alerts, and rest information is presented on the right side. Let's start to talk about main features uh, of uh, my fleet application. We are talking about tracking. We are talking about voyage planning. We are talking about voyage monitoring. And of course, for post-voyage analysis here. Let's start with voyage planning. First task, and it's a nice feature, what we have inside of my fleet application, it's called voyage order or voyage instruction. You may see my voyage, which is currently executed, and uh, destination port was POS, depa sorry, departure port was POS, and destination is Singapore container terminal. And currently, voyage order can be planned by fleet operator in a quite simple way. I can, uh, let me show you this wizard page. I can activate Void Shoda wizard page, specify necessary information, like let's say intended draft. You may see departure is uh, plus, Fremantle. Destination is Singapore. I can select terminal. In my case, it's 203, for instance. On the next page, I can perform, um, or let's say, just uh, criteria 
for the void show the creation. It might be with for weather optimization, with connected weather providers, or without them. Even vessel performance and can be calculated. I mean about uh, uh, fuel consumption, CII calculation for this voyage, using standard vessel model or even tuned vessel model when we have information about uh, fuel consumption versus RPM versus draft table. It, it can be adjusted on our chat world uh, back office site. Okay, next page is schedule, plain schedule. You may see my plan time of departure is, well, let's say, was yesterday 9 uh, a.m. UTC, and plan speed was adjusted to 16 knots. Afterward, fleet manager can adjust some nodes, put, put them here in this screen, and send this information to the vessel. When? It goes automatically to the vessel by two separate ways. First of all, uh, captain or captain can receive this information in textual form to the vessel uh, email address specified on our backend, of course. But the most important, what this information will come to our onboard to Myra ship, which was presented in the previous webinar. And in Myra, in, in inbox, you may see, we have this watch on order information which should be used by captain or let's say by second officer first for the voyage planning purposes. Information comes automatically and even during voyage planning in Myra, departure, arrival ports, schedule, all this information is adjusted automatic automatically in Myra in the certain fields. When navigational officer will send uh, this Myra voyage plan for acknowledgement and, uh, and approval and voyage is ready for execution. I will minimize Myra, it's not needed anymore. What you can see in my fleet after that? Of course, you can see this voyage show the route in graphical form. It's presented in blue color right now. But additionally to it, you may check what was the initial Myra route. Green one. It looks the same, the similar to the voyage order instruction and route created in my fleet. And when you may just check what was it any modified route for this Myra voyage plan. And we have one in blue color and you may see what geometry was changed by crew by NAV officer due to this high risk area as example. Of course we don't have any high risk areas where but it's just an example. So fleet managers will be aware okay the planned route the final one is a blue one not a green one that means what ETA or PTA will be changed and we have to pay attention why it was created and maybe be in contact with her master on board and just decide what to do and what would be the solution. Finally, I would say uh, some words about our chat world Globe G2 Connect system. Let me present it very shortly. Finally, this route or any modified route after safety check procedure in EGDIS, it will be loaded into monitoring. And this information is synchronized automatically from our uh, eGlobe G2 Connect EGDIS with my fleet solution. I will activate EGDIS route in settings and you may see this route is presented in red color. And it is slightly different from the latest modified route. So fleet managers can check all information related to the planned voyage uh, on shore in my fleet uh, application. Initially planned voyage plan, modified voyage plan, even for update number one, two or three, and which one is executed inside of the XD system on board, which is loaded into monitoring. That's important. 
and uh, after voyage planning and monitoring we come to the some information about safety check and safety related information or let's call it remote safety audit by companies NAV policy or by safety management system just have a look to the screen I will activate voyage plan uh, information box and we have different pages here first one is related to waypoint list schedule information for Agnes route modified or initially planned route on the second page you may see status even status of ENCs loaded in Agnes or updated in Agnes you may see green status accepting this one in my particular case and I would like to check what is going wrong with this particular NC and why it is red I will select this one but first of all I will activate menu called licensed NCs you may see all my licensed NCs related to the initially planned and modified routes but why I have this NC with the red status, not license? Because this NC it's crossed uh, by Agdis monitored route a bit, and it was not synchronized with our back office and not licensed. That's why this NC is not updated in Agdis or even not installed in Agdis in my particular case. So it's a tool for fleet managers to monitor safety and especially for ENC at this particular uh, stage next one it's download area users can download everything directly from my fleet application in terms of routes it can be downloaded in international RTZ format and uh, final voyage plan in Excel format on the page number four you may see some kind of log information what kind when voyage plan updates were performed when data delivery were performed to the vessel but the most interesting is page number uh, five here we have uh, two sub pages on my voyage, pa voyage page you may see the general information which was used during my voyage planning but on the safety compliance we have three sections divided by these vertical lines and from the left to right left one it's a planned safety related parameters what kind of draft was selected for this voyage what kind of underkill clearance margin were selected for different voyage segments like bursting confined coastal and open sea in the middle part you may see Agdis check route information and this information comes directly from our eGlobe G2 Connect fleet operators can check okay check route was performed what was the status and what kind of safety check parameters like safety contour or vertical clearance were used by second officer during check route procedure and finally you may see Agdis monitoring related parameters these parameters adjusted for monitoring purposes at the moment or let's say last received from the vessel you may see okay my vessel it looks like an open sea segment let me switch off uh, in sea coverage it's not needed anymore even I will select professional WMS overlay and in open sea segment you may just check what kind of safety contour safety depth draft and dynamic on the kill clearance including CPA TCPA values adjusted in Agdis and what is uh, and similar can be done for of course uh, uh, narrow waters coastal waters so you will be aware how crew perform uh, rules according to your NAV policy to, according to your uh, safety management system and this information is available from eGlobe to connect here also well 
Let's move to the next topic, settings and overlays. We have a lot of overlays in my fleet application. You may see them in chart settings menu. I will explain them very shortly, but some of them are definitely interesting. For instance, we have a number of uh, WMS ENC, or well, let's say map uh, overlays, like the chart. The simplest one, we have capability to show ENC worldwide presentation. Let me just increase my scale to show you some details. And here you may see ENC WMS uh, overlay. Even you can see uh, initially planned my route and modified route here. We have some kind of open sea maps, Bing maps, satellite overview. I will not go to all details, but it's selectable by user choice, for instance, if necessary. When we have uh, settings for routes, as it was presented by me already, and when we have also settings for past track positions. Let me select three days, for instance, and you may see my past track positions for my demo vessel from yesterday. And actually, fleet managers can uh, monitor uh, the real vessel movement. In my particular case, it's just the ideal case, but this, this watch is simulated by special uh, vessel emulation tool. When we have some uh, settings for ENC coverage, which can be checked uh, also. And um, the most interesting thing is CO plus layers, chat world information overlays, where we have three different uh, layers, adjustable and selectable. And let's start with one of them called stay away areas, especially for Far East. I will decrease my scale. To select a proper one, for instance, in Indonesia. You may see these, let's say, areas, and even information can be taken here in, in the short form. And it, under peak report function, you may just find, okay, this is optically shallow water. What does it mean? Uh, this areas, these zones were created by optical shallow water surveys, where uh, ENC uh, survey, original or, in a, or even updated one, uh, was done a lot of years ago. It has a poor or uh, worst cut zone value. And of course, these areas are to be avoided during voyage planning and especially during voyage execution. There were a number of grounding cases in the similar areas which we investigated previously. So it, that is a quite important layer. Uh, plus, we have temporary preliminary and navigational warnings overlay. Let me, let me show one. You may see these uh, orange lines or standalone objects. For instance, this caution, I can take information and read what is about. We update this information on daily basis. So it's available to fleet managers just, just in time here. And we have weather overlay. Let me activate it. I will select my vessel. You can see uh, current information related to wind. Different parameters can be selected here. Waves, wind, uh, temperature, thunders. But the most uh, interesting thing here, what you may perform play head function using weather forecast. I will activate VP info box again. Select modified route. And you may see this play button. 
I will activate it. And let's perform vessel movement by route. You may see vessel is moving ahead to the destination port with two hours interval and uh, weather forecast information is constantly updated. So it might be used for uh, the weather monitoring and during uh, voyage plan execution and uh, if weather is changed significantly, some actions can be taken or even voyage plan can be modified and free planned according to the safety needs. Okay. What was about uh, overlays? We have some minor features like uh, user color adjustments and so on. Distance ruler, peak view, peak report function, as I mentioned already. But let's be focused to some main functions and dashboards. First icon on the left side toolbar called fleet list. And here you may see your fleet, status of a voyage plan for the any vessel, uh, status for ENCs, delivered, installed, or even not licensed and information about current alert and notifications. Information can be obtained here just using mouse for the particular alerts or even from fleet manager page. And for my demo vessel, I have one active alert. Vessel is the head exit route schedule by one hour, 13 minutes. What does it mean? First step, alerts are presented and can be adjusted in alert settings menu. We have four categories here. Safety related alerts, when vessel executes a route or voyage without exit routine monitoring, especially for G2 Connect systems. But when you may see a second alert, what vessel is executed, is executed voyage without active Meyer watch plan, which is important. Second section called area notifications, you may see uh, four different alerts. Uh, I will talk a bit later about custom areas, but also it can be used for monitoring vessels inside of environmental zones or marble zones and stay away areas as well. When we have some voyage related notifications and it relates to outdated position reports, status, off-track status, or let's say off-route status, uh, thresholds are adjusted and can be adjusted by, by users. And out of schedule, for out of schedule, this alert and notification uh, can be used in both directions. I mean about ahead of schedule status and behind of schedule. So when vessel is speeding up to get destination early, let's say for safety reasons and speed is exceeds charter party agreement or let's say not equal to the plane speed, you may see what vessel is ahead, um, deviation or delta time deviation and this alert will trigger some events in my fleet. And additionally to that, in notification center menu, you may adjust email notifications for the selected alerts. For instance, I can use my own account or even any external email adjusted here and specify, okay, alerts related to out of schedule should be sent by email to my main account plus to this person. It might be uh, a charter optionally if needed, but all that stuff can be adjusted here. And after adjustments, this alert will be provided to those, those sources. We have unlimited uh, capabilities to adjust emails here. It's just a simple action. But how it looks and why I have this alert? Let's just have a check. Uh, my current setting relates to 15 minutes out of schedule alert. 
threshold is 15 minutes. Currently, my vessel has following PTA from Agdis monitoring route to Singapore container terminal. It's uh, 25th of June, 2.42 a.m. My current PTA calculated by schedule is 25th of June, but arrival is 1.28. It succeeds my threshold, and that's why I have uh, alert and notification what my arrival is one hour, 13 minutes early, or let's say ahead of schedule. What will happen if I will increase this threshold to, let's say, three hours, 30 minutes? And now you may see alert is gone because it's still inside of my threshold and okay it doesn't exceed anymore my threshold regarding watch monitoring and uh, what we can cover safety aspects was described already we have everything starting from planning uh, and uh, monitoring uh, conditions plus this safety check value. But what is about schedule? For schedule information, we have this uh, page on the, in the right uh, bottom corner right now called ETA summary. And why we have four ETAs or PTA or even five PTAs or ETAs? Because we want to present everything. What was initially planned and what kind of plane time of arrival was used for the initial Myron watch plan. Second line shows plane time of arrival from the last modified route update. Third line, especially for chart vault this shows this plane time of arrival from the root schedule. And current and when you can see two ETAs. Current ETA it's a calculation based on uh, this schedule, current speed and schedule information itself. And bottom line shows even ETA by current or late, latest received speed of the ground. And comparing these two values right now, you may see what ETA by current speed of the ground will be even early than when ETA calculated by current schedule and planned in Agdis. So vessel is speeding up and will arrive with current SOC on 24th of June and maybe some questions regarding uh, charter party agreement and vessel performance will be raised immediately on shore and you will be in contact with captains on board. Additionally, we have some different widgets here according to last known vessel position. For Eagle of this we can receive also speed through water and heading information because we have extended navigational data here. You may see weather data, it's a data related to the last known vessel position in textual form. You may, may get information what is the wind, wave, temperature, humidity, and visibility here. Not sure about visibility, but the rest is ah, pressure, air pressure. So it's available. And final page uh, called Vessel Info, it describes information about vessel itself. Vessel particulars, what kind of Myra ship version is installed on board, it might be important. Eglob G2 Connect version and rest data according to US. Also, we have information in the last MyFleet versions re related to Myra root network version installed in my ship on board that's important and status of that currently you may see i have a white color status updated so navigational officer crew uh, and fleet management performed update downloaded this file directly or directly to myra or sharing by internet sources so all is up to date if root network version will be in red color here not updated when it means what it's 
all the work three months and some actions are to be performed. Okay. Uh, next topic. Next, next topic is related to the vessel tracking. We have different tracking source. Our standard tracking source for pace tracking uh, has position reporting interval something like 20 30 minutes. And in most cases, it's just enough. But for a Globe G2 Connect system, we can do it more frequently. It depends on uh, settings on our back office, back end side, which should be agreed between fleet management and chat world first. Because it relates to internet consumption, but not so significantly. We have checked differences uh, between, let's say, one hour track, track reporting interval or 10 minutes interval. Differences are not so big. It should be discussed between company and our sales and customer relation teams. But the most important thing here, what eGlobe G2 Connect tracking is the independent source. I think what some of you are aware about issues with AIS tracking in, in the Gulf of Aden during last, let's say, months and so on. And most of most of tracking systems today, they use AIS anyway, from terrestrial stations or from satellite stations or satellites itself, where AIS information is redistributed. eGlobe G2 Connect provides direct tracking information from the vessel to my fleet. So that means you will not get any failure or missed vessels uh, in such mode. Or even we can use combined mode for tracking using our standard tracking provider for, as we use for pace tracking. Plus, additionally to it, a Globe G2 Connect as a separate and backup source can be used simultaneously. What we should say about non eGlobe vessels, which uses chat world services. Here I would like to indicate one new, or let's say brand new device type approved by DNVGL on the uh, six, uh, 460 and hour uh, cybersecurity standards. We call it eSync. eSync is a gateway between chat world and my fleet and vessel side where we may have uh, different third party LD systems. What we are talking about here in terms of information exchange. First one, uh, in -sea data and our data delivery from chart world to the vessel in the secured and safe way, plus planned routes, of course. And in opposite way, Agdis monitored route, which uh, intended to be, uh, to be used in third party Agdis system for this particular voyage and monitoring it can be loaded to the to chat world backend or let's say to my fleet front end using in eSync device in the opposite direction. So we have a choice to display Agdis monitored route even from non chat world Agdis systems. It was already tested with uh, several systems and it works. Next topic, uh, alerts. Alerts we already discussed, but I would like to make a focus here for custom area alerts. Currently, you may see two custom areas. It's my test areas. You may see test high risk, risk area and pay attention area here. And additionally to that, we have this setting called vessel inside custom area. What should happen and what will happen when this vessel will come or cross the boundary of this area? Alert will be generated, available in my fleet, and can be also shared by email, <clears throat> as all our alerts. And so that might be useful because these alerts can be managed by you. It might be done even in Google Earth application, in desktop version of a Google Earth Pro, 
And in setting page, you may see this custom area submenu or let's say sub page with some instructions how to create Google uh, custom areas. And here you may load them and activate. In my case, I have these three areas. When uh, let's talk shortly about post voyage analysis, and it would be the last topic before our Q&A session. Uh, for post voyage analysis, we have a playback function. For instance, currently I am in active mode, and I am just uh, monitoring current voyage and how vessel executed. But additionally to that. We have an icon or button called historical voyage plans. I will activate it and you may see two of my historical voyages for this particular vessel. Let me select this one. It was also from Fremantle to Singapore. My fleet requests data from back office. You may see what data was successfully received, and now I will enter into playback mode. And what we have here. We have vessels which stayed uh, at the departure terminal. We have uh, replay playback mode notification on top. And when I can just perform vessel uh, replay functionality, using this player or progress bar on top and all historical data can be checked visually or even downloaded in download area section root voyage plan and tnp warnings let me show you one more time even uh, roots you may see it is current situation I have had only green, or let's call it initial Myra route. And what was happened in some time? And yeah, at, at this position, at this one, at this timestamp, my Agdis route was loaded into monitoring. So this functionality can be used for post voyage analysis and investigation purposes. And few words about this icon, which uh, which called Agdis replay files. If you have chat vault Agdis fleet and Agdis system on show in the office, in that case you may request original Agdis replay file directly from my fleet download this file and use it in office for a detailed investigation with the high accuracy tracking uh, on show. Finally, uh, we have some our smaller features. In information page, you may find information about user guide which can be accessed directly from application. You can see FAQ section. And of course, in FAQ, you may see the most important data and functionality described under the different sections. And under release notes, you may see all release notes, what we have during my fleet releases with quite uh, uh, interesting explanation which can be used instead of user guide if necessary and with pictures, of course. On the about page, you may find the number of the last version. I am using live system and this version is available in the live today and uh, can be used by you. Last but not least, but this is the point, let's say what I wanted to, to describe here. We have developed my fleet REST API. What does it mean? 
means a capability to integrate my fleet data with your local applications, what you are using today for fleet management, for operational aspects, for, for different your own tasks. Because we are able to provide information about vessel tracking. We are able to provide information about uh, active Myra route, Agdis monitored route in RTZ format, which is the international one today. We are able information to provide about currently active uh, voyage plan. If it would be interesting to you, please contact us. You are welcome and we may discuss this integration. API is ready. You may see some different calls for tracking, for vessel information, for routes, for voyage plans. Uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, in general, Frank, uh, I would say it was a quite short uh, presentation, but we have covered a lot of features in a short form. Uh, and <laughs> again, uh, 35 minutes, 40 minutes would not be enough to present everything. So we were focused especially for safety aspects, voyage order features voyage planning, voyage monitoring, tracking, replay, playback mode, and post-voyage analysis. Thank, Thank you, you so much, your... Mike. This was a, not a short one, I would say. It, 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 it showed significantly how comprehensive the tool is and how many modules are being incorporated in our solution and how many topics we can address which might be of concerns for our customers. Since you have still the page open from my fleet, and since we're coming now to the number three part of our webinar, which is the Q&A session, I have one question. Um, well, we have a few questions, but I have one question related to, um, apart from the own vessels, is also other traffic available, visible on the MyFleet application? Uh, what kind of traffic you mean? My, my other vessels? Yes, let's right. check. Because Absolutely. And then we're referring to the AIS, AIS signals, which we can display. No, 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 we, we do not present AIS signals, frankly. Um, AIS. Yeah, yeah, no, no, we don't have it so far. Yeah, but we can we can display AIS, can we? From other vessels, mm -hmm. from other traffic in my fleet. No, 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 Frank. Uh, currently, we had we had it in demo mode. Currently, it's just disabled. So in demo mode. Okay, okay, no, no, in demo mode. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, Kodra. If we go further to um, other questions we have received, um, then. We have one which is referring to, let me just check for that, mm -hmm. which is referring to the, you displayed the TNP notices, enough area mm -hmm. warnings as a chart overlay in my fleet. And the question about that is how often, what is the correction cycle for those um, notices? Uh, weekly and daily basis as I said during my presentation, our right. chart data department receives data on daily basis and we implement, we add these objects immediately. So this information will be presented just in time. Right, okay, okay. thanks for that. Uh, another question is related to the data, data saving um, periods in my fleet. How long do we save data in my fleet, such as voyage plan, active replay files, this kind of stuff? Yeah, that's clear. To me, uh, this is exactly what was explained under historical voyage plans. And we store this data for a one and a half year period. It's accessible for the replay mode and accessible for downloading purposes. If our customers will require more than one and a half year, when we can decide it on project basis. Right. Okay, Doc. Thank you much for that. 
Um, there is a question about the API, but you referred already to that in details. Um, last but not least, you showed also in my fleet that there is this windy tool available. And in course of a review of the voyage and a preview, we can see the weather along the track. Is generally a weather optimization service available for our ecosystem? Uh, yes, as it was mentioned, uh, weather optimization with or without vessel performance can be used either on shore or on board. For instance, uh, my selected vessel is funny, funny crowd. It's demo names, of course. Uh, but what I have on the watch order here. Or maybe under some different vessels. Let me check. Well, One second, I will reselect vessel. Uh -huh. For instance, let's assume me as a fleet manager or fleet operator, I will try to plan voyage from sea position to sea position, just in a quite short form. I will use my initial settings, 630, and I will use last vessel position sea position by peak cursor it would be my uh, departure for simplicity purposes i will specify sea position for arrival and when on route and performance page i can specify weather routing optimization with or without vessel performance calculations which is connected to our partners and providers for instance, I will use weather routing uh, by view. Max wave height. Okay, I will keep 7 meters, it's enough. 55 knots for max wind speed, 220 nautical miles to hurricane as a limits. My departure is immediately, my plane speed 12 knots. What is happening right now? My fleet sends request to our root network server, our advanced tool for voyage planning and creation. Root network will calculate the safe route from port IA to, to port B, or let's say from departure to arrival. But additionally to that, in current uh, particular example, we use uh, vessel optimization and vessel performance calculation. And you may see, I have, a, I have results already with routes from departure to arrival for this, let's say, open sea conditions based on the grid circle here. No. Based on weather forecast here, most probably. And you may see even vessel performance data for this particular voyage. What, what would be CO2 emissions, what would be fuel consumption, and what kind of predicted CII we have for this voyage order. This is part what we do on show. And this information comes on board to Myra. And this information will be available also to Captain and to the second officer. And we will do the same voyage planning in Myra based on voyage order instruction. So we cover weather optimization, vessel performance uh, optimization with the connected providers. Right. Okie dokie. Many thanks for that. That was again a little bit more comprehensive. We don't have any questions left. We have answered everything. In case um, the attendees would have further questions, please don't hesitate to reach out and contact us. Um, we are happy to answer any questions also outside this uh, webinar. You see my contact details down there. I can forward those also to Mike in case I would not be able to answer that. Um, there is nothing left rather than saying again, very thankful that you've been here and looking forward to have the system further 
uh, developed in terms of helping our customers in any needs they would have. Again, Mike, thank you also to, also to you. Many thanks again. It was a great presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you very much and nice day to all. Nice evening, day, and even morning. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good day, good evening, and have a good night. See you. Keep in touch. Cheers. Bye. Keep in touch. Bye bye.